Jared Poland Fronos Photo. Dot com, and this is a preview of the DJI Inspire 2. That's right, we tested out the DJI Inspire 1 two years ago, almost to the day when we were in Brooklyn getting a hands-on preview of that one. This time we don't have a hands-on preview, but we hope to get one shortly so we can test it out ourselves. Now, it's pretty similar design to the original uh, Inspire 1, but here's what's changed. Magnesium aluminum alloy body is what they say, and it increases the stiffness while lowering the weight. Obviously, less weight means you can fly it longer, and that's going to help with battery life. Now, one of the major additions to this camera or to this drone is that it has a new FPV camera, which we're basically calling the pilot view. It's a camera in the very front of the drone that allows the pilot to worry about flying while somebody else can go ahead and control the camera that's using the payload. Higher end drones, which tend to be $20,000 or more, have a feature like this, so it's nice to see it in one of these Inspire drones. Now, they've also added obstacle avoidance for the first time, and it works up to 34 miles an hour. You have a forward-facing obstacle avoidance camera that will see up to 30 meters. You have an upward one that's infrared for up to four meters. So if you fly inside or under bridges or uh, under low flying things or low hanging things, you now have a sensor that's infrared above to basically help you so you don't run into something there. You still have the downward one, which is for better hovering, as well as helping you when you do not have GPS inside. So it's not a 360 degree one because you don't have it on the left or the right, but this is a professional drone and most of the pilots flying these are pretty damn good at what they do. Now you have a new image processing system, which is called Cinecore 2.0. That's all I know about that. It's a new image processing system. Uh, we're gonna talk about the batteries in just a second. Now the new, okay, let's talk about the batteries right now. You have a new dual battery system. That means you can put two batteries in instead of just one. And instead of getting something like 18 minutes of flight in the old one, you're gonna get between 25 and 27, depending on the size of the payload that you have attached. It also has a self heating system, which means it will keep the batteries nice and warm up to uh, the, or down to the temperature of negative four degrees Fahrenheit. That's good for helping you fly longer. If you already have a ton of batteries for your Inspire 1, I feel bad for you because they do not work in the Inspire 2. Now, max speed is 67 miles per hour, where the old one was up to 50 miles per hour or right around 50 miles per hour. But check this out. It will get to 50 miles per hour in just four seconds. I would like to see it race a Tesla with ludicrous speed to see how well it does. And finally, you have two new cameras. You have the Zenmuse X4S and the Zenmuse X5. 5S. The X4S is a one inch 20 megapixel sensor, which is similar to what you would find in the Phantom P4P, which is the Phantom 4 Pro. Uh, and then the X5S is a micro four thirds. That's 20.8 megapixels now instead of the 16.0 zero megapixels of the X5. Now keep in mind, this is an interchangeable lens system, so you can get different lenses for micro four thirds, so you can change that for flying out. Let's see, similar to the X5, but with more options. I wanna remind you that you can still use your older payloads with this. You just connect it to the payload thingy mabobber on the bottom, and you should be good to go. So here's what's similar to the X5, but with more options, like Apple ProRes 422HQ. You have Apple ProRes 4444XQ. That's four fours, by the way. H264, as well as H265 and Adobe Cinema DNG up to 5.2K and also 4 Okay, uh, one other thing that DJI has come out with is a 5.5 inch display as well as a 7.85 inch display. So you're not using your iPad, you can purchase their displays. Now what's interesting about the 7.85 inch one is that it has 2000 nits of brightness, whereas your 9.7 inch Apple iPad Pro has 511. So that is extremely bright for when you don't have a hood when you're out there flying. What you all want to know is what is the price? Well, the Inspire 2 is priced at $3,000 
for just that unit itself. That's pretty similar, if not the same, as what the Inspire 1 came out as. And then if you want to get it as a combo with the X5S, it's $6,198. But if you purchase it before the uh, end of the year or something like that, you'll save $200. More information is down on that below. So it's not a bad system. It's not a bad upgrade after two years, especially being able to fly longer. That's one of the things that pilots always want to be able to do is keep the drone up there longer so you don't have to have as many batteries and you can then go ahead and get the shots that you need to get in a shorter period of time. We hope to get our hands on one shortly so we can run it through its paces, get Digi Richie out here and fly it. He has an Inspire 1. We'll compare it to the Inspire 2 and get back to you with the results that we have. If you could go ahead and give this a thumbs up, leave some comments down below with what you guys think, as well as subscribe on YouTube and like on Facebook. Well, I would greatly appreciate it. And that is all I have to say today. Thank you very much for watching. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya.